My name's Robert Villa, I'm 36 years old, native Tucsonan. I'm president of Tucson Herpetological Society. We're gonna give her a little bath here. I live with um, a Gila monster, a desert tortoise, and a rosy boa. I grew up flipping rocks and, and logs and looking for lizards and bugs. There's pictures of me in the crib with little sock snakes that my grandmother <laughs> put in the, in the crib with me. So I think my destiny as a naturalist and a herpetologist was sort of sealed. Yeah, this is a Sonoran desert toad. Uh, Incilius alvarius, and uh, we are just near a parking lot along the Santa Cruz River. The Sonoran Desert Toad is uh, the amphibian version of the saguaro in that it's found nowhere else except in the Sonoran Desert region. Sorry, little guy. That was probably traumatic for you. They're big toads, and they can live up to 20 years, probably more. They spend their lives mostly asleep uh, until monsoon season. They are actually awakened by the sound of running water or water hitting the ground, thunder. That's what actually brings them to the surface. And it's a race to eat, mate, lay eggs, eat some more, and go back under when the, uh, before the water dries up. Paul, here we go. And uh, people confuse these with bullfrogs because bullfrogs are also big and green. But again, toads have these big glands behind each eye, and bullfrogs don't. The toad has produced this chemical 5-MeO-DMT as a defensive mechanism. And it takes a lot of harassment and a lot of stress for the toad to willingly um, exude the substance. 5-MeO-DMT purely uh, smoked and inhaled is an instant uh, trip out of consensus reality. It it's, can be likened to a near-death experience. I haven't smoked it. I don't intend to. People describe pixelated vision, extreme senses of euphoria, well-being, love, uh, clarity, a general awakening of re reality and consciousness. On the other hand, people who react uh, negatively experience extreme trauma and years of, of therapy. Then about 2017, uh, I was approached by Vice Media to um, consult on an episode for a program that dealt in psychedelic substances. We were able to interview Yaqui community elders and talk about the actual role that the toad has in Yaqui culture. To this date, there's no conclusive evidence that suggests that toads were used as psychedelics by any pre-Hispanic pre cultures. When the episode aired, uh, this really shot the toad into popularity. Even though there was factual information and we stated that it wasn't indigenous cultural practice, people wanted to experience it. To have this and use, to use it is a federal offense. It's, it's breaking federal law. That doesn't stop people from doing it, of course. In 1980, a guy named Ken Nelson landed on an obscure paper which outlines the fact that this one toad species produces 5-MeO-DMT. And Ken had a light bulb go off. He found a Sonoran Desert toad, and he squeezed the gland onto his windshield, and when it dried, he scraped it off and he smoked it. And he had a transcendental experience. And he became so excited by this that he wrote a pamphlet he would just leave this, this pamphlet in places wherever he went. It has its, its risks. Uh, someone said uh, this can 
either cure PTSD or it can cause it. When people collect toads, and uh, they usually grab great buckets full or bags full, and they, they take them to a central location where they uh, squeeze the glands and collect the substance. And they don't return the toads. They have habitats, they have neighborhoods, if you will. And if they're removed from them, then they have a very low survival rate. I'm looking for the etymology of this toad name. The Tucson Herpetological Society, we give small grants for research just to understand toad populations. Amphibians have experienced severe declines all over the world from chytrid fungus, pollution, climate change, um, habitat modification, roads, which, which they get smashed on, on top of uh, collecting, which we can't really measure very well. At least five sites which were known to have toads uh, did not have toads. I can't tell you if that's from pollution. I can't tell you if they've gone somewhere else. But from a couple of years to the next, uh, uh, at five localities, toads have disappeared completely. It's really a race against time to understand what are healthy toad populations and then what are the, uh, the threats to toads. Psychedelics are popular and everyone is curious about them. I think a nightclub is a great place to talk about drugs. <laughs> The toad is essentially a laboratory that produces pure 5-MeO-DMT, so there's almost no difference whatsoever between what a toad produces and what a laboratory produces. The toads live at the venue. They're, they're known to be there. It will be uh, perfect to, to talk about this. This toad is uh, at risk. If you're doing psychedelics to be a better person or to uh, be a more conscientious person, there's, there's a dissonance there that, that has to be addressed. <laughs> Our goal is to say, look, there's all these other threats, and we're trying to quantify all of those measurable threats and say, the toad is not doing well, and collecting them cannot, cannot help at all. I have an obligation to this Sonoran Desert Toad to get people to leave it alone. Let, let the toad be a toad. And uh, if you're going to do 5-MeO-DMT, uh, you can source it from other places besides a living creature.